This circuit breaker was sent by Justin, who had it in a Rolex charging pillar for his electric car. It's a three-phase breaker, and it appears to be a fairly common problem with these that the left-hand terminal burns up. I say left-hand terminal, I'm not sure if other people have had other terminals, but most of the, uh, even the single-phase ones, always seem to seems to be the terminal on the left-hand side for some reason. I don't know if that's just coincidence. So this is purely an RCD or RCCB as it's marked here. It's not an RCB, although it's, rate, it's marked 63 amps, that's just its maximum current rating for normal use. Um, it's not going to trip out if it goes above that. That seems to be provided by a, a separate circuit breaker in this particular pillar. There also in this pillar, if we look down at the bottom here, we can see a single circuit breaker, which is probably the control circuit breaker, which will be powering this module on the contactor. So I'm guessing that ultimately when people plug in a valid charging lead, it sends a signal back to this, which then enables the contactor and powers up the lead. It's all safety interlocked. So I thought it'd be interesting to take this apart. I have done a little exploration, although it's sealed with goo in these holes. Uh, it is soft goo and you can get a screwdriver through it. So I've done it in one of them so far. So let's take the uh, screws out. I have to say, the concept of it, the electric vehicle chargers, I'm kind of interested in seeing the CCTV footage over time of when people make their own cables or put in damaged cables or have other incidents. It's going to be quite interesting, particularly if Tesla is actually rolling out one megawatt chargers for trucks. That's uh, got huge potential for exciting electrical incidents. I would guess there's going to be a lot of protection against that, but there, we're talking an awful lot of pillar, power in an electrical pillar. They've got a couple of these uh, pillars, the Rolex ones uh, locally, I think, here in Ramsey. Um, they've both been mowed down at some point by vehicles reversing over them. Now they have crash barriers around them. One also had the front pulled off when it looks like someone actually managed to drive away with a cable in. Uh, and another one uh, got strimmed at the base. Because it's a plastic base, uh, one of the gardeners uh, was strimming weeds around it and it shattered the plastic base as well. So let's open this up and take a look inside. So the burnt connection, there's the pickup coil. Interesting construction. So what has been burning here? And can I get these bits out? Are they held in by screws or are they clipped in? Ah. Uh, this is either an adjustment or it's a attachment for holding stuff in. Let's uh, whip it out and see what's underneath. There's a little screw underneath. Let's whip that screw out as well then. It may be an adjustment screw or it may hold stuff in. I think it holds stuff in. It does hold stuff in. So here are the contacts and there is a very burnt contact. It does appear to be an issue with uh, this mechanism. Let's pull this part of the contact out if we can. It's got a little arc uh, breaker plates in the back of that. I don't know if you can see that. I shall shine some light in so you can see or could just take it out. You can see little arc breakers. So I'm looking to see if there's anything particularly different between one terminal to other as to why this would have failed. Nothing is really sticking out as being a significant issue in here. Uh, not really much to see here. This is not easily coming out. Right, tell you what, before I spend too much time faffing around here, I'm going to pause while I try to take this to bits and to a further level, and then we can actually uh, we can explore the results together. Okay, well that's it definitely in bits now, and it's one of these things that once you've seen how it goes together, it makes me wish I'd taken it apart just that little bit slower and just explored in this area. 
The only thing that's coming to mind at the moment is that it doesn't look like the cable's on the wrong side of the cable clamp or anything like that. It looks like it's definitely been, the contact's been burning up here where it makes. And one thing that I, I notice about this channel where it's burnt out is that the contact in there, the wire tends to come, there's a spring that hooks over here and then the wire comes out here. And I wonder if the spring was interfering with that because it's one of the more cramped areas in the casing because if you look at the other top of the casing, it's got this little channel in here that presses down onto that uh, platform there. So that's why I was just thinking it would have been interesting to, if I had another one, take it apart just that little bit slower. Other than that, I'm not seeing anything that really hints at what went wrong. Maybe it was just a bad contact. Maybe the charging circuitry is rather aggressive on that phase. Maybe, you know, there's a high inrush current and it damages the contacts. It's very hard to say. The other reason I was kind of hesitant uh, while uh, taking that apart was I was kept getting the tension drawn to this little circuit board. Now, this type of circuit breaker, this RCD, is a Type A in terms of its chip uh, monitoring. That means it's got a, a little box here that shows a sine wave, but it also so, shows a chopped, it f shows a full wave rectified sine wave. And that's because this is a more complex and more expensive circuit breaker. It's designed to detect pulsing DC. Um, whereas sometimes if you've got a, a traditional circuit breaker, it can't detect certain faults, particularly when the power goes through a bridge rectifier, which is unfortunate because that's what happens in lots of things, Christmas lighting, um, power supplies, lot, your washing machine, it'll go through like the bridge rectifier feeding the sort of variable frequency motor drive if it's running the motor and sort of uh, converted DC. So um, they have, uh, in this case, because the electric cars are almost, you know, they've certainly, they're converting it from AC to DC, they specify that it has to be this type of circuit breaker. And I was expecting this to be super complicated, and it's not. Here is the test resistor. The test resistor, well, let me describe what happens here. This is a pickup coil. It's got 20 turns of wire around it, and all three phases, plus the neutral, pass through this coil in one direction. And what happens in normal operation is that whatever currents come in will flow back, either through neutral or through the other phases, and it balances out. There's no net difference in current. But if current leaks to ground, it induces uh, a magnetic field in this coil, which is picked up by this uh, sense winding, and that is then processed and then used to trigger the protection. And, and so I was expecting an active circuit board in this. The circuit board in this is not active. The trip mechanism is a little bit more interesting. Let me show you the schematic first of all. So let's just zoom down onto that, focus down onto that with a better description. Let's actually zoom up onto that. We can do that. So here are the three phases of neutral going through the pickup coil. There's the 20 turns. And then it's got two diodes. Let me show you the circuit board here. Here is the circuit board. It's, it looks a bit scratchy and grubby and ripply because it was coated with a sort of conformal coating and I had to scrape that off to see what these were. But these are standard M7. They're just standard rectifier diodes. And we've got the, the heavy sense coil is coming in here and here. And the fine trigger coil is going out here and it's coming off one of the common terminals here. And we've got two capacitors, 476, that's 47 megafarad, and 226, that's 22 microfarad. Are these polarised? I'm not sure what type of capacitors these are. Are they tantalum type capacitors? It's quite a high value. Um, because if they are, it's an odd way to use them. So here we have the two diodes are just basically in inverse parallel across the output of the coil. And the reason for that is that it's going to cap it to round about 0 0.6 volts. It means that if there's an absolute epic failure that causes a really huge current imbalance of like hundreds of amps, this is going to cap it down. It's not going to damage the circuitry by inducing a high voltage in this. So it caps it down to about 0.6 volts, either polarity. <coughs> the capacitor here, 47 megafarad, then allows AC current through. Or let's just say changing current through might be a better description here which I think is how it's detecting pulsing DC. And that then gets filtered by this capacitor here, which will, it's got a lower value, so 
it's going to filter out sort of spikes and trends and things like that, but it's going to allow the a more sustained fault current being sensed current to actually energize this coil, but not with a lot of current. And this is where it gets quite complex. So I was thinking, here is the coil. It's got a screw stuck to it for reasons. And well, I'll show you this up close. That's the best bet. So I'm going to have to bring in my trumpy brick just to actually get super zoom vision. So um, let's uh, focus on my trumpy brick uh, and I'll focus on Hawaii at the moment. So that says focused and I'll turn that upside down so it's a nice clear image. We shall zoom in. And here is the little coil. It's quite a complex little mechanism. It's normally in this little plastic container here, which is a pin that sticks out the bottom. A pin that when the mechanism is reset is pushed in by the mechanism and then stays in until a very tiny current flows through that coil and then it releases a mechanism that pushes that pin out that trips the mechanism. That mechanism is basically, it's a latching magnetic coil. This little round thing is a magnet. I don't think it's a rare earth magnet. That's a, that's a slightly subtle with the uh, Hawaii. It's a Xi Jinping reference, President Xi Jinping of uh, China. He did something quite funny in a way. Uh, to put things into perspective at the moment, the reason I had that Hawaii logo is that uh, Donald Trump has clamped down. He's told Hawaii that nobody's going to be helping them with uh, Google having to supply them with Android software. Manufacturer of components haven't to supply them with components. They're basically trying to sabotage the Hawaii brand by the look of it. And that's not going down well in China, rather surprisingly. And uh, it just so happens that the following day, the President Xi Jinping of China showed himself going on a tour through a rare earth magnet factory, which is uh, something that they kind of have a good strong monopoly on in China, which would cause problems. I think that's a little political statement being made there. But, but anyway, less politics. Here's the little coil. I have removed the little white plastic disc. There was another one on the top. I had to cut it off because it, was, it came loose and was getting in the way. But when you push this, uh, when you reset the breaker and that little white pin gets pushed in, it pushes this little spring-loaded plunger, well, spring-loaded pivot, it pushes it against the end of that coil. And because it's got residual magnetism, it latches against it. But when a slight current bias is put in, it unlatches that and causes that to ping open. And it pings open with enough force to actually chap the mechanism and trip it out because it's the mechanism itself, which I'll try and bring it up here and show it, uh, is quite complex. It's all fallen to bits. It's not terribly helpful. But it does have a little trip plate um, round about there, I think it is. There's a little trip plate. Uh, and when you when it trips this, it sort of does that. It pings a mechanism that just uh, knocks a latch out to actually release the breaker. So it's quite clever how they've done that. I have to say, this is the first time I've seen inside a Type A circuit breaker. Um, I was expecting complex processing circuitry. If you look inside some of the other circuit breakers, the the standard AC circuit breakers, the most common type. Let me just uh, let me just find one. This is an excellent example. This is a cheapy Chinese one from Tomzin, and you see that circuitry in there. It's got. The pickup coil here with a few turns around it. It's got, if you can see in there, there's a, uh, you can, under that white wire, there's a resistor. There's a capacitor, and the resistor is feeding with that little thyristor over there. And the capacitor is between the, uh, capa the thyristor's uh, negative terminal and the gate. And that effectively provides a filter. And when the current is enough out this, it basically triggers that thyristor, which shunts a bridge rectifier, which then is in series this trip coil, which then triggers the mechanism and causes it to trip. It's very, very different, completely different to most of the other ones I've seen that have active circuitry in them, like in special chips just for RCDs. And this one is odd. It's possible, very slightly possible, that because they're quite expensive things, Rolex sourced them from a manufacturer that was maybe a bit sort of more economic. Dunno. It doesn't look an excessively cheap breaker. 
The circuitry is simple, but it's this bit's quite complex. It's just the way they've achieved it is interesting. Dunno. Strange. So, I have to say, no decisive cause of that failure. Could it have been bad contacts? If, it, if it's the same with every similar one, it, I think it's a fairly universal contact that goes into these housings. So, I wouldn't see anything specifically different. The springs were all hooked on. The little spring that sort of pulls this contact into position was hooked on up there. So, I don't know. It's very strange. I don't know what's caused that. Maybe it is the thickness of the wires just filled it where it's just come into that cramped area. That's odd. Uh, so there we go. That's uh, that's it. That's uh, as far as I can go. Nothing other really obvious. I will say there was a little tab of the uh, sort of the fibre board they hold the arc quenching plates with down here, and it was off. I don't know if that could have jammed in the mechanism or, or if it's a byproduct of the fact that the plastic in the vicinity of it down at the bottom was burnt um, just in at the bottom of the housing there. Strange. I don't know. Uh, have I just... Did, I didn't focus back down, did I? Um, so that would have all been a bit out of focus that bit probably. But I've done it. It's too late now. So um, there we go. I shall just focus right down to there right now. It's a bit late, but but I've done it. So uh, my apologies if that was out of focus there, but you weren't really missing much anyway, uh, other than me just wittering on about how I couldn't really see the exact cause of the failure there. So, yeah, interesting to see circuitry, though that was actually worth taking it apart just to find that. And uh, look at that circuitry. Keep in mind that these capacitors do look polarised. Um, I suppose it's just a brief transient ripple that it's going to see under fault conditions. I'm not really sure. It's a bit strange. It's also not going to go very high voltage. It's it's only going to be capped 0.6 volts, so I guess it's not really going to cause a polarity issue with these. Um, also, there are capacitors in series, so they're never really going to see... Uh, I don't know. If there was, then it's a pickup coil, so you're never going to get a DC bias as such. You're just going to get a sort of AC ripple. Yes. Uh, certainly, if you've got thoughts about this circuitry... Uh, then leave them in the comments down below. If you've got thoughts about how this failed, leave them in the comments down below. It's a very odd thing, and it just seems so common, it's quite strange.